The following program deals with a controversial, controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all of the information. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another Saturday night, another Modern Comic Mayhem. We've been uh, bullshitting backstage with the uh, Discord. You guys remember the Discord is available. The link is below. Uh, you guys can come hang out with the people in the Discord after shows on Saturday night, pre-shows on Saturday night, sometimes after shows on other shows. We like to hang out and, and shoot the shit after things and before things and good stuff so come hang out with us in there so i'm just going to leave them if you guys hear them in the background that is uh what you're hearing we got the peeps in the discord shout out to matrix shout out to chad cave shout out to brad selden and whoever else wants to jump in there tonight you could definitely hear chad cave yeah yeah all the the, no the soundboard is open yes the soundboard is open so how you doing brother I'm good, man. I, I have the answer to your question from the Wednesday night show. I watched it uh, this morning. Here's your Scarlet. Oh, that's what that is? It's the uh, the Sky Striker Hasbro, or the HasLab for Sky Striker. So they took the Ace body and they put her head, well, touching her parts here. But they uh, that's uh, that's what it is. Dude, that's awesome. That's super cool. I, um, yeah. Is is she regular size? Yeah, it's a three and three quarters. So, what they had done was um, with the Sky Striker Haslab, they 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 took the, the the Ace imprint that you showed. So you had the old Ace, and they took her and they you know they repainted and just basically put the her head in there, and then. <laughs> And then um, for the, the Dragonfly is when the one that did Galinda, which I think is from Argentina, where they took Galinda was based on Scarlet, and that's going to be the 6-inch. Six six inch. I got to look that so up, So it'll dude. be Scarlet for the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly was last spring, and it came, so I think it will come like this summer. What up? Alex in the house. You want to say hello to Ryan? <laughs> hello, Ryan. Hello. That's Junior, everybody. Say hello to Junior. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan. Daddy? Yes. Alright, Galinda, <laughs> let's take a look here. I've got... Um, oh, yeah, look at this old school Brazilian card. It's a... Uh, that's what I, that's what I remember. Yeah, blonde, uh, scarlet, and she has the the blue and silver. That's dope. Yeah. So that, they took the scarlet figure, or the eighty two mold, they pushed it in Argentina, named it Galinda, and then basically for the Haslab, that's when they were trying to figure out like you know what are going to be the the campaigns or the tiers. That's when it was. Uh, I think she was the second to last tier. And people, you know, people weren't familiar with her. So they were just like, this is the, because people wanted like, they, they wanted the Night Force stuff. They wanted like, and they wanted Airborne because like all that stuff had not yeah, been Yeah, the silver. Yeah. You know, it's funny so, though. Look, they have the old style straight arms, right? It doesn't have the, the, the turn, right? Are these the old arms? It's got Flash's gun, Breaker's communication. Yeah, that's. Cool. I don't know where the backpack is. <laughs> so they're gonna do a six inch of her. Yes. So if you do the Dragonfly Haslab, 
I saw there a new were, thing that HasLab put out that was interesting. I think there were three, because that came out with the Wild Bill, which was fantastic. And I want to say there were three other figures. And I want to say she was Ripcord. I want to say she was an unlock. And I honestly, it's been so long, I, it's hard to remember at times because you have to wait. So I get the the piece. What but. Is, Haslab uh, did something. I saw something new today. I haven't seen. Um, they've got a new one that's coming out for the that they've already pre-announced for uh, Star Wars. That it's going to be a vintage collection that's going to announce uh, May fourth. Oh wow! So a lot of people are thinking it's the Cantina, which would be really cool because they could do a lot of three and three quarters of the, the, a lot of characters who have never come out. Yeah, they aren't. They aren't I'm always hoping for a Death Star, like a real, like a, a good playset for the day, Death Star. But I think both will probably come out eventually. So, it, you know, one or the other, it's it's fine, either one. But there are so many characters in that, in, you know, New Hope and that Cantina had never come out, like the bartender, the twin sisters. I mean, you can kind of go through that whole thing, and they could they can make a lot of tears on that. If they really want to. I don't know why. Uh, just a heads up, everybody. Um, I uh, I noticed that there has been some weird stuff going on in YouTube lately. I see a lot of the the people in the chat. I don't take away wrenches, so um, but uh, you know it is what it is. Um, let me see here. It's not like Mario Brothers. Once you get hit, you kind of lose your. I don't know what it go. is, man. It's weird. I'm about to say, I, been, I thought they were you, you handed you, they get handed out and that that's kind of it. Richie's yeah, really good about handing them out. Yeah, and um, also uh, check to see if you're subscribed still. I know a lot of people were saying that they were going through just not getting subscribed. All right, dude, I got to show you guys something. I'm so glad you're here for this, Nate. Uh, this is kind of funny. Um, I wish Red Hood was here because Red Hood was here when we initially saw it, but. Stein showed us this the other night uh, during, right before the Hot 10. Check this out. Oh, <laughs> Michael Jordan comic books are coming and you got the Michael Wait 8-bit Michael Jordan. That's actually cool, dude. These are terrible right here, but there's something about this right here, man, that is like, if it wasn't so damn expensive, I might buy one. Like I said, best player ever, worst owner ever. Same guy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's that saying that usually the best players are the worst coaches and owners, right? Because they can't explain what they do. I didn't realize. So I asked my dad the same thing. Like, I remember growing up and I was like, why would, why isn't Larry Bird a great coach or, you know, somebody like that? He was because it comes so naturally for them, they can't understand why people can't do certain things. And it makes a lot of sense, but it's just that, you know, you know especially you hear all the Jordan LeBron comparisons. I, it was funny because I was actually watching something the other day and someone was asking some of the kids today who are in NCAA for college basketball, like Dalton Connect and Zach eating those guys. And they just, they, you know, they didn't know that much about Jordan. And one of the guys said, there weren't that many good players in the eighties. I'm just like, are you got to be kidding me? Because of La Juan, you and I mean, like the battles in the East. And then, I mean, there were so many good players and the best part was they never left the team. So Malone, Stockton and yes, Utah. And they it hated each other such forever. A battle yes. To try and get to the top. Yeah. So you could actually get to the finals and try and win. I mean, like you had to, you, you had to go through trials, like just like the bulls did. They had to, you know, get through the Pistons Detroit. before them. Everyone yes, has to yeah. go through it. And some people get through it, and some people don't. But, you know, that team never had a real center. They never had a real point guard. They had Jordan Pippen. You had Horace Grant, who made an all star team, and then who went to Orlando with Penny and Shaq and then faced off against the Bulls. I mean, so. Um, but I just. Have you seen the? I, um, he's the greatest player of all time. He's just—I uh, think he's just a worthless piece of shit, though. <laughs> Have you seen the um, the videos? I've seen like these I IG posts where it's um, Shaq and he's like on a other podcast, and the younger guy is like a younger player, and he says 
he tries to start telling Shaq that LeBron is better than Jordan, and Shaq is like, he's like, can I just get up and walk away? Can I can I leave? You know, and, <laughs> and, and there's Shaq is he is the old guy like get off my yard. Yeah, but he and Barkley. That's what that. that's, that's honestly that's what makes uh, their NBA coverage so good, and probably better than any sport because they're not biased. They call it like it is. They tell people stop whining, stop complaining. Don't what is this load management? I mean, they they get into it, especially between even the two of them, where Shaq will give Barkley just nonstop hell about. He never won a ring, so he's not that great. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a different time. Yeah. All right, let me see if I can find this video here. Uh. See here. I like JLS. All right, here we go. The Spud Webb one would ash cam size that. <laughs> Supposedly he says something. It's a five minute video, and they don't they don't play the quote. <laughs> um. But I think the whole difference, like Jordan, would never leave Chicago to go try and win a title with other guys and then come back. And that's what LeBron did. He, he kind of he really took the easy way out. He left Cleveland to try and find other guys that he could win a title with and yeah. partner up with, and then come back. And I, I loved it when he came back to Cleveland, especially when they won and and being down in that series. But then again, he goes to LA. Oh, yeah, so it. it's Here we just go. Uh, Jordan wouldn't do that. The old guys wouldn't do that. I'll get. I'll have to take this off. But oh, wait, hold on. I got to play this for everybody. Oh boy, they're not hearing it. Hold on here. Hold on, hold on. You said you said uh, uh, LeBron James the greatest player ever. Ever. What about Michael and Kobe? So you just gonna pass Kobe up like that? I'm gonna I'm I'm pass Kobe up. I'm gonna look at Michael. I'm gonna look at the. I'm gonna look oh, at the. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Patron America. Yo, yo. Patron America. You, Kobe you. Bryant couldn't fill, or Michael Jordan fill LeBron's shoes. The impact that he's had with different teammates, would different you be organizations. Mad, would you be mad at me if I just walked off the you show? You can't leave. Hey, you, are, are, you, are you aware that this man that has tripled type. and doubled Michael Jordan in assists? I'm gonna Assists say, make other players better now. I'm going to say one thing to you. And Max, I don't know the numbers like you do. Michael Jordan is what in the finals? Six and what? Oh. And what is LeBron in the finals? That's all I got to say. Shaq, how many did it, game, how many game sevens did MJ go to? Zero. Zero. Hey, Zero. I'm just saying. How, how many times did MJ see the Warriors, though? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Will you stop it? I'm, glad, I'm just Shaq, saying, though. Shaq, Shaq, stop it. Shaq. He's going to beat the Warriors? Hold He's going to beat Shaq. When Jordan retired. When Jordan yes. retired. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And Jordan could beat those people basically by himself with him, Pippen, and Coach, basically, right? I mean, and, and a good three-pointer like John Paxson or Steve Kerr every once in a while. I mean, I can tell you, I mean, and I know Seth Curry is no Del Curry, but I remember when the great <laughs> outside, like Larry Johnson and Alonzo Morning when they beat the Celtics in the first round, the best Hornets highlight was when they actually won game two in 1997 against the Bulls in Chicago. It came back to Charlotte 101 because Glenn Rice, Eddie Jones, Del Car I mean, you can go to Anthony Mason. You can kind of go through the list of guys because Mason had left, David Wellesley, Bobby Fields. And then Jordan just like, I don't think they lost another team. I mean, the, the, the fact that the Knicks could never get to the finals until Jordan retired and that Knicks team Bro, don't starts, even talk Mason, about that. I, I was a Knicks fan growing up, and oh. I remember sitting on the couch watching that finals game when it got taken away to a little corner box as we watched O.J. Simpson driving the white Bronco, on this Bronco down the highway, and I'm yep. watching the finals, the Knicks lose to fucking Olajuwon in the finals. Yeah, that was rough. It was... Uh, there was just uh I mean like I hate Jordan more than anyone and there is hands down no one better and the fact that is uh like Kobe is Shaq and they didn't have a really good relationship for a long time and if he's not the one who's gonna be critical about Kobe no one else should be I mean 
Steph and the Warriors were great, but it's just it's a different time too. It's the defense that's played that, that was played then is not played now. Yeah, I like to see Anthony Mason. Like you think, uh, <laughs> you think Draymond get <laughs> frustrated now, but let Anthony Mason, John yeah. Sarks, and those guys get on them. Yeah, you think Draymond's bad? Yeah, check this out. I'm going to show you one of the coolest things. You're going to like this also. This is a perfect timing. I get all these cool things. I get to show Nate that I've been waiting to show him. This is one, probably not one of. This is probably the coolest remark I've ever seen on a comic book, and I'm so God, jealous. God, it's not those David Mack remarks that people have been seeing. <laughs> I saw the Wednesday show this morning, and I'd seen Clutch's stuff before that. I was like, what? is on those 250s rancid i gotta go hold on i'm gonna go back sorry i'm just uh, like i'd rather like, have i'd rather drink bile than have him draw on my book now so so for people that don't know what nate's talking about this is oh, what he's oh, talking wow. about yikes <laughs> And I loved how somebody in the comments is putting like, well, he's trying to put glass on Daredevil. I'm like, he's blind, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need glasses for? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right. All right. So this this is a, a dog shit one, right? Let me show you the best one. When you say best, is that like being a C student? In the no, classroom? bro. You're going to okay. agree with me. Okay. This is Simpsons Comics number four. Oh. The Dupe, Willie the Dupe Dipkin issue. This is a 9 8 copy with the card included. It's, it's still included. And it's signed and sketched by Bill Morrison. And look at the remark that Bill Morrison put on there. It's beautiful. He redrew Willie the Dupe Dipkin and put, even looks, put Fish Face fuck. on the bat. God, that is. That's, it's. God, I can't imagine having that in my collection. That would be I don't, incredible. I'm going to show what people what this is. Willie. It looks so good. So for people that don't know, this is the card that is inside of this comic. Making fun of this famous card. Billy Ripken, the Billy Ripken fuckface card. What a terrible picture that is. Holy cow. Let's find a better picture. I used to always <laughs> love when you did this on the market report because I did not know about this card until you started doing the, the market report on the flip side that <laughs> this was in, like, which book to find that in. All right. So this is the original. Okay. We all know about this great, amazing part of Americana. This is like Superman and apple pie and all that fun stuff. The fuckface card is 80s kids riding their bikes up to the card store and trying to pull one of these so they can go laugh and show it to their friends. Should tell them, Joe, Joe sends a text this week. He had a box 89 flare trying to pull one this week. Yeah, yeah they were all the uh, black boxes, I believe, he said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in, there's something important to, to let people know about this. This card is so you know, beloved that they did an homage to it for Willie the Dupe Dipkin, who plays for the Springfield Isotopes. There's Bart in the background. <laughs> Isotopes. And it says fish face, right? Well, they made this card <laughs> initially for a promo at San Diego Comic-Con, right? And... The original, or the original has all the stats on the back, just like the uh, Ripken card, right? So mm -hmm. the the original, by original I mean the promo that they handed yeah. out at San Diego Comic Con. It will say P four Diamond in it. So the back says Willie the Dupe Dipkin, Isotope second base, height five eleven, weight one eighty five, bats right, throws up. Born 61256, New Shelbyville. Willie holds the league record for most errors committed in a single inning, 17. His only other claim to fame is the world renowned air card, in which Dipkin poses unwittingly with the word fish face scrawled on the knob of his bat. The spiky haired <laughs> culprit responsible for this foul mouth misdeed has yet to be apprehended. Right? How fucking great is this? This is such a great promo. 
this this is like and not there there's so many people do not know about this batting average under the fucking mendoza line home runs mendoza line 0.75 reach third and pull the hamstring <laughs> <laughs> RBI zero. It says, and this is exactly what the back of the 89 Fleer like kind of looks like. It says, do you really like it? Yeah. Do you really want to know? Willie never really liked playing baseball. His true ambition was to play the flute for the new Shelbyville Philharmonic. Unfortunately, the spiky haired culprit scrawled the, scrawled the word flute face on the end of his instrument and Dipkin left the orchestra in a frustrated rage in 92. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awesome. So here you guys go. Simpsons Trading Cards Series 2 from Skybox International and Bongo Comics coming out this August. It has the diamond and the Skybox and the Bongo. This is the promo, okay? And the promo, the front looks the same, just the back is different. Well, in Bongo Comics, issue number four, if you open it up on the inside, you will see... This in a pack, just yep. like this. There you go. You mean, you mean this book? Yep. You got it. Open up. Open it up to the to the um, and the package in the package will be this card. So let's let's have E. Show us this. Look at that. How yeah, freaking cool is nice. that, you guys? And see the that's back it. of the the one in the comic doesn't have the stats on the back. It just yep. says you know. Simpsons Trading Card Series 2. It doesn't have anything like yep. the promo. So, super, super cool stuff, you guys, that uh, you might not know, but back to why this is the greatest uh, remark ever. Bill Morrison redrew that character on the front of this book. That's so awesome. Shout out to Comics Addiction. Uh, this is just amazing right here. Comics Addiction are the one that, uh, here we go. Crack Baby. <laughs> yeah. So, shout out to them for that, too. Such an uh, amazing <laughs> idea that I wish I would have freaking thought of, man. I really I'll just never I that. forget when the Aiden R. Ripken came out and then going to the card store and then kind of finding out about it and telling my parents trying to explain to them why I wanted the card, especially being like eighth grade. And you know, it doesn't sound like much, but it was it was thirty five dollars at that point. Like it like that was the peak. Like if you if you could find one, if you had like 35, 40 bucks, you could get one. Mm. If you had a, if you knew a dealer. And I remember my dad, I had I had to bring him into the store to get it, I had the forty dollars, and I, but I had to bring my dad to the store because <laughs> a fuck face being on the bat, <laughs> and and my dad's the calmest, quietest guy. He's like, "This is what you want, <laughs> yeah." He's like, "Okay, <laughs> so, that's he, awesome." He, you know, and then the best part is, for such a quiet guy, <laughs> every time he'd have people over on the weekend, and they'd have a party downstairs, and I'd be sequestered up or downstairs <laughs> hey come go get that card go get that card and then he would have all these people was like and people would just be stunned by this card he's like i was like i think you're getting more of the 40 dollars out of the entertainer value than, than i'm getting i'm like maybe we should get a little Switch bit of cost on the side yeah and he just looked at me he's like you can get back upstairs <laughs> <laughs> showing it to all his buddies man that's what i remember those days so well <laughs> when when we were kids, um, I told this the other night, we would get home and I would try to, when I was like in school, I would try to do my homework before I got home so that way I didn't have to spend any time doing homework. And we would get home, throw our bags in, in the house and hit the, hit the desert, the, the field to play whatever sport we were playing until my dad would come out and he'd whistle and we could hear him from like three blocks away. Yep. And... My, I remember being on the streets when and when we saw um, a tennis ball launcher for the first time or a potato gun, as we call them as kids, right? 
And yeah. w- w- all the, the dads were like hanging out, you know, and I remember saying, we were like, we want one of these, can you, and they figured out how to build it, and then they, instead of giving it to us to let us play with, you know, we, each one of the dads, you know, there's a couple of them, the dads are in the street shooting it at each other and playing in the streets, you know, and the kids are sitting <laughs> yeah. on the on the cable yeah. box going like, when can we fucking play with this shit, you know? <laughs> shit like that. I love shit like that. <laughs> uh, dads are build, building like catapults and stuff like that. Yeah, the dads man. are trying to like oh, our boys get big. Like, yeah, the, the girls are away. Like, no, no, let me let me have that. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's what we yeah. so in Boy Scouts. That's what we used to do. We used to learn our lashes by building catapults and you know launching tennis balls at each other. Because you know what's more fun than that. Well, when the parents started like helping the kids, they started like getting like way too involved in it, like getting like um, they would get like surgical tubes and stuff like that, and then like all kinds of stuff to you know to make it launch further. Um, we had bat- for- we we made batons at, at at Tennessee, and we were launching them to like this island that was kind of in between a lot of houses. And I remember there was a there was a, a guy who was uh, who was pledging. Uh, and then he had made like this super potato gun. And unfortunately he kind of launched it at the wrong time. So there was a take back the night and all these women were, or well, not women, but you know, younger you know, students. And they had like, they were just like having a silent protest and he brings out the potato gun one night and then he ends up launching it, ends up like hitting like the lead in that thing is like dominoes just like going down <laughs> <laughs> and so uh <laughs> i remember anti-protesters I remember, showing yeah, up <laughs> it, it, did, uh, it did not take long before the uh the university called my phone and uh i was like man i was like oh, i would you know we would cover for you this but i was like if we had we've been on probation for like a year that's like we can't. You know, someone, <laughs> someone's got to take this down the sword on this one. You come out with a potato gun is not, you know, launching it at them. That's like you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to eat this one. I remember <laughs> those days. Those were good days, dude. Those yeah. were good days. Um, did you guys see this? This is kind of cool. Rob Liefeld put this up on his IG. We're gonna get into the Rob Liefeld portion of tonight's show. Uh, He says, The Revengers. Welcome to Way Back Machine, back to 1980 when I was 13. I wrote and penciled and inked and lettered and printed my first comic book. I modeled my style around cartoonist that I love, Fred Hembeck, and featured my friends and I as comic book superheroes from Marvel and DC. I sold it to my junior high classmates, and all the money went to a charitable cause for our old school and church. This is my only copy. I've seen a couple former classmates sell them on eBay over the past decade. Great memories. These were the friends of a lifetime for me. You never know when you're going to get together and hang for the last time. Dedicated to Nathan, Paul, Ken, David, and Robert. This is nuts, dude. That's cool. Right? Wow. It's actually someone's... I mean, like the art's great. Yeah. For And he's that young doing that? I mean, that's... That's super cool. I mean, format style. That's cool. He's lettering everything too, as well. Yeah. And big, huge fucking splash page. And look at the part is like, page. you want to see how he did Spider Man, Thor, Hulk, Iron Man? Yeah, it's really good. It looks really good. I mean, you guys know exactly what Fred Hembick's stuff look, looks like. This is really good. Next issue Who are the Lady Liberators? So I thought that was pretty cool. So you know what we had to do? We had to we had to update the Beyond Wednesday's comic creator first list to uh, first comic, The Revengers, and uh, there's a link to that post. So for all the uh, Rob Liefeld fans, start scouring the the interwebs for a couple for a copy of that one of ten. Because you asked him during his interview if Megaton number five was his first one, right? Yep. Yeah. He. Published, I asked I him if, if that was the one he was talking about, and he said no. So there's another one out there that he did do that never got published, but he was older. So, man. Yeah, cool shit. Uh, did you, have you guys seen all the news about him, man? He is 
like back on top of comics. Like he's up yeah. there in goat status now. Like a lot of people have put him there, but now and and people that know that he's already one of the goats with how many records he's broken. But now that he's doing what he's doing older, he's he's goat status. He's no no denying his goat status in comics for Rob Liefeld. Right, because he's showing up into those Hollywood conversations now, and then has like the support with him too, like A list actors and you know big time directors, like stuff that instead of like oh when you hear a rumor of with these people attached to it, it's probably going to get made. I would think you know after all the success that Deadpool had, and as big as Ryan Reynolds has gotten, because in not just Deadpool but the repose on the other movies that. It's you know there's got to be a, a connection between the two of them, and it's got to help propel like Rob into like, whatever circle he needs to be in in Hollywood. Well, what's funny isn't that chick Ryan Reynolds' ex-wife? Isn't Olivia Wilde? That or... was Scarlett Johansson. Oh, right? Scarlett Johansson. Unless he has, it could be more than one because he he married Black Widow, and then he went to um, Scarlet Sapphire. Yeah, yeah. This is uh... so that's how I know their names. What's what's and and this is I don't know this is kind of interesting man this is you know that the Hollywood um, people but they look at him as Olivia Wilde wasn't she Aaron Judge or Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend Yeah am I thinking and then she did Psylocke in X Men Yeah she cheated on her husband with uh, one of the um, the uh, Backstreet Boy kids that are like from England what are those guys called one Direction oh, or one something. One Direction? Yeah. Oh, there, yeah, they're awesome. And her husband was uh, <laughs> uh, another actor. Anyways, um, this is, you could tell he's in that world where the Hollywood people are like, okay, this is the guy who created Deadpool. Let's take a look at his other things. And they yeah. they just want to get, and she just got doing her that Barbie movie and made so much money off the Barbie stuff. Oh, is she in that too? I never Margot yeah, Robbie is going to play her. I knew Mar- Mar- Margot Robbie's going to play. I knew Robbie played Barbie, but I didn't know was Olivia Wilde in that. Uh, did but, she direct it? I don't know if she directed well, it. I, but. I I thought the article said that Margot Robbie was probably not going to act on it, acting no. it, but like a- acting more of like what a producer role or. No, this like is that. crazy. So this is that was how it was at first, but this is what Deadline's reporting. So they say. Uh, Lucky Chap teaming with Olivia Wilde on Deadpool, Rob Liefeld's Evangeline, question mark. Get your checkbooks ready. And then the guy says, in what shapes up with the potential to be a big one, the dish hears there's a film rights auction in the works for Evangeline, an angel who fights the forces of evil, with Olivia Wilde directing, based on the signature comic book creation by Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld. Aboard to produce is Lucky Chap, the sing- the shingle, the shingle? Lucky Pat, Lucky Chap, the the shingle. What does that mean? Margot Rob, Robbie runs with Tom Ackerley and Joey McNamara and Simon Kinberg and Audrey Sean through their genre banner. So it must be their uh, production company. I've heard the plan was this to be de- that this was to be developed for Robbie to star, but her camp is denying that part of it. A big A list writer is circling to adapt. So. And just so you call it the uh, the chat got me because Olivia Munn, it's not Olivia, Olivia Munn. Wilde. Oh yeah, Olivia Munn. And Played then Silent, Wilbert yeah. actually mentioned that um, Ryan Reynolds was uh, mentioned or was married to Lance Morset first. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know the Hollywood all that stuff. But yeah, who I is used to watch... he not married? Who is he not married to? That's Dude. why he's a, a billionaire. I used to be the biggest Ryan Reynolds fan because he was in this show called Two Girls in a Pizza. That's the best show, and it's not released on like Oh, it was such a good show, dude. Great show. Bird? Yeah, fucking A, man. Yeah, dude. I can't believe that is not out somewhere. That is actually hysterical. I mean, that was when I first saw him. Like, this guy's a riot. Yeah. He was in a fucking uh, Canadian show, too, that they used to play on like Disney Channel or something when he was a really young kid. Is that what it was? No, that's just oh. the old movie. Oh, oh the Canadian movie. Yeah. <laughs> all the Canadian beers, yeah. yeah. With Rick Moranis. Yeah. yeah. And the dad who sound like old Sam and Sam. This is a big deal, man, if this happens. It, 
you know, there's been times before where there's supposed to be stuff done and he kind of canceled it. He said on his Twitter, let me see if I can go to his Twitter. Um, all I know is between all the women we keep talking about, first, second, thirds, yeah, I, I'd take any part of them. I mean, yeah. But he, everyone's doing pretty well, it seems like. Yeah. Dunn, um, Wild, Blake Lively. That's more sad. Jesus. So he said, I 100% financed this with my own money and was set to go to series, but the fit was bad and at CBS, so I said I wasn't going to go forward. I got threatened and yelled at my own by my own agents, but I knew that it wouldn't gain traction with the execs running the Saturday morning network. I had to protect my kids. And I guess this was, he was supposed to do a Youngblood movie. Did you guys ever see this? No. Or a Youngblood show? Mm-mm. Mm. 90s cartoon unmade series promo. Come on, what the hell is going on here? Come on. Chop, you think chop. it's got to be as similar to like the X-Men just because you think they want to copy off that, right? It's like the anime is really good. Young blood team. Stand by for drop. Go, die hard. Chapel. Vogue and Shaft. Bad Rock. Riptide and Sentinel. It looks good. Yeah. Where was this when we were kids? Oh, check yeah. This was supposed to be CBS, man. That would have been CBS? Yeah, yeah this was, was going to be on CBS. Morning. Remember those bad rock covers? There were some crazy bad rock covers back in the day. Hey, right, that's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. So that, that would have been pretty cool. They he's been dropping all kinds of cool of good nuggets on his um on his Twitter lately. Uh, you know, talking about all this stuff. Um he said there's nothing with Young Bung rated now. There was uh he did a really good uh Rob Servations on um Ed Piscor I heard and I haven't listened to it yet. Let's see here. Oh right here. Uh he's been putting all these out you know, kind of teasing it. And the crazy stuff is that he's also, yeah, look at all the raw observations. On top of all of this, he's putting out his memoirs. It says here, legend Rob Liefeld has a memoir coming out in 2025. So this is pretty nuts. Comic book legend Rob Liefeld, known for his contributions to Marvel and the formation of Image Comics, is set to unveil his memoir. He's also calling it Rob Servations in early 2025 through Ben Bella Publishing. So it says, offering a rare peek into his remarkable career, the book promises to provide readers with an intimate look in the journey to becoming one of the most celebrated figures in the comic book industry. In the early 90s at Marvel Comics, he introduced the world to iconic characters such as Deadpool, Cable, and X-Force, catapulting sales to unprecedented heights. So, um, you know, he was talking the other day on one of his shows and he was saying like you know i'm 56 now and i've got all these crazy stories that i'm going to tell but i'm going to wait you know until those people who are in those stories are not you know they've retired because i don't want to take money out of their you know their hands i thought it was very very interesting but here we go maybe he's he was uh not being too honest there who knows he says I have I have a, had a lifelong affair with comic books. They have been my passion since I was seven years old. Having been fortunate to break into the business as a teenager in the 80s, I've seen five decades of tremendous change. Nice. Shout out to the sub. Appreciate that, pal. Um, he says, I've seen five decades of tremendous change, quite a bit of upheaval, and a fair amount of rebellion and betrayal, some of which I started. It's been a, quite a ride, and I'm eager to share this incredible ride with everyone, said Liefeld. Watching my creations become roles portrayed by Ryan Reynolds, Josh Brolin, Zazie Beetz, Minka Kelly, and many more on the way is a crazy culmination of my comic book dra- dreams as a kid. Over the cur- course of my career, comic books have become a rich minefield that drives pulp culture. This is going to be interesting, man. So 
they're advertising it with X Force Eleven to reveal that this has been a doppelganger this entire time. But it's not really a Rob Liefeld. It's actually yeah. Rob Liefeld. <laughs> you know, the one thing when you kind of get into the all the comics, like casting and, and the changes, Zazie beats like the way she did uh, Domino. Fucking fantastic. Yeah. She was one of the best parts about Deadpool too. I wish she would have had more part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I agree. Did you watch Atlanta with her in it? Yes, it was awesome. It was amazing. Yep. Yeah. She's really good in that. So if you haven't seen that series, like because she, she's the lead, she's the lead actress in it. So here's something else that's crazy. Rob Observations, the memoirs, it will also feature ten original illustrations and promises to lift the veil on the inner workings of the comic book publishers, the suits behind Hollywood studios, and pivotal moments that have shaped modern pop culture. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to reflections on the career-defining decisions, as well as facts little known in the comic book industry, Liefeld offers a candid and compelling account of his life and legacy. I love his shirt that that he's wearing right there. right. Sister Margaret School for Wayward Girls. Yeah, because you get it. You get it. Yeah. You don't. You don't. That's good shit, man. He's at the top of his game again. That's for sure. That is for sure. I think it'll be kind of interesting, you know, if you think about it, though, McFarlane with his toys, and then Rob has really kind of come up. You know, I don't think they're obviously in direct competition with each other, but I mean, I think naturally they're always trying to maybe not outdo one another, but who's going to be the biggest when it all kind of is said and done. But yeah. Jim Lee, I think is probably more, you know, I don't think that's probably his, uh, his, I he's know, more, I, I, don't he's more I don't think it's more his nature, but I can see Rob and Todd always, who's going to be the, the guy in the spotlight, right? You got it. The yeah, biggest yeah. one. Right. But I mean, like, but Rob's always been like a pop culture icon, anyways. Like, like look it's at how the many issues. Yeah, yeah. The five of ones. Yeah. Button down flies, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you know you got to buy the most expensive baseball. McFarlane, and then go bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and then get investors involved by showing them the rolling them the baseball across the table. And, and then it's like I I invent a venom. I invent a Deadpool. I did. I've been a cable. I mean, like you really kind of go back and forth. I mean, yeah, you know, they're both. I mean, it's, a it's like the same. Name, but... I, yeah. It's like the same arguments yeah. that we always have. Like, like what's the cameo versus first appearance, you know, yeah. it's the same kind of thing. Like for the nineties, like who is the greatest. Yeah. 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 So do you guys, uh, I, I watched uh, the show on Wednesday this morning, but I, I didn't know if you guys got into like the Silver Surfer conversation. Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, what, what do you think about it? We talked about it pretty heavy last night on the Hot 10 also, uh, number yeah, two. Yeah, I had a chance yeah. to watch it. I, I, just, um, I just don't know exactly. I guess I just can't figure out exactly what Marvel's trying to do, where they're going. I think that's the biggest question. Like, and I don't, I don't know. Uh, is it Julia Gardner? Is that her name? Yeah. She's awesome in the Ozarks. Um, yes. She, she's, she's in the Americans, which is a great series, but she has a really small role in the Americans, so I, I wouldn't judge her on that. I just don't know exactly. To me, I, when I when I saw that, because I don't know the character. I, I I've never read the Fantastic Four books, and I I read Fantastic Four now. I've read in the past, but I just don't know that character. Well, so kind of one of the things where, like, if you're, if I'm going, like, I love Iron Maiden. If you're going to tell me Maiden's playing, I'm expecting to see Bruce Dickinson. Yeah. If you tell me I'm going, and all of a sudden I buy a ticket, I get Blaze Bailey for the X Factor. That's not exactly what I wanted to see. If you want to put both of them in, I'm good. But yeah, I. Blaze Bailey would not be the one I'd put over Bruce Dickinson. Well, you know what I find interesting is everybody's going after that um, what if book, right? Because it has a story where Galactus took the um, the power cosmic from him and put him on Earth as a human, and he was hiding on Earth as a human. 
So it's still, I still think that there could be a chance where like that's what we're gonna have, and the the herald that Galactus has now is a female. Um, doesn't mean she's gonna. But here's the thing, though, and you're right. I think you, you talked about this last night, and I didn't see it, where she has been stated that she's going to play Shala Ball. Um, so, oh yeah. Which is good. I mean, like, if you had said, like, you know, she's, I think that's where people probably get a little too more turmoil. Like, hey, she's Silver Surfer. She's not Silver Surfer. She's Shell Ball. She's not Norm Rad. But I remember, like, when you remember when Fantastic Four 2 came out, it wasn't the best movie, but the one of the things they did really well was Silver, was Norm Rad. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. So I would yep. love to see him now. And, you know, if you want the comic community to support the Marvel movies, if you want to do things, I mean, you've already proven like if you want to go off on your own side and do different things, people, you know, it doesn't really work. Sometimes good characters, good stories, they work. I think, uh, I think if you actually look at like perfect example, the, the whole trailer for tales of the empire that came out. Yeah. Yeah. Ahsoka. That was interesting. Like, yeah. Like I wouldn't ever care about Barisafi or Ahsoka, but like, you know, you, if you get the right people, and you know, the right characters and the right stories, things work. If you don't, you get Eternals and you get some of the other stuff that just doesn't work. I just don't want them to to mess up the what's probably the last chance of getting the Fantastic Four right. Oh, I finally watched the Marvels. What did you think? I didn't think it was that bad. Like really? that everyone was complaining. I I enjoyed it. Like I didn't hate it. Like there are parts I definitely zoned out in. I think it's then, better than the last Thor, but I don't want to see it again. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it got to a point where I was like, kind of like, hey, why are all these cats eating people? Like where I bl- blanked out for a second and then start started seeing that. I was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, I should probably rewind to see what how we got to this point. I was like, I don't really care, so I'm just gonna keep going. I feel like I watch it more for uh, Monica Rambo than I do for anything else. Yeah, it's I just, it. it's, it's just not. It's, eh. it's almost like I have to watch it because it's part of this storyline. Like it's number seventeen of twenty-one. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't need to watch it, I I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I think it's at a point where it's like I've seen all the movies to this point so why miss one yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm the same way because like i try to see them all in the theater uh-huh. it's just that yeah, it's you know the weakness has been the writing and it seems like in the stories for a couple of years now so it's like at some point you know what your base is you know what your audience is I'm fine. I'm trying to like get back That's to where we were, where everything was was they good. It was like the, the you know, better better days. They don't know who what their audience likes. That's the problem. They just don't. Well, I yeah. think they don't want to acknowledge what their audience likes. I feel like they almost want to like. We know you like this, but we want to give you. We we know you love Coke, but we want to try and give you diet right. And see if you can get away with it. And it just doesn't work. Here's some yeah. RC Cola. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's not the same. It's Trying good to... every once in a while, but I'm not going to drink it all the time. You got it. <laughs> you got it. This is this guy says, I wish we would, we lived in a timeline where the movie, the, the movie was, there was a movie called The Herald, The Silver Surfer, directed by Christopher Nolan, starring Killian Murphy. That would have been pretty sick. He's a stud, man. Yeah. When I saw him as a scarecrow in the first Batman, I was just like, this guy. I was like, well, how is he not in more stuff? I was like, God, this guy's incredible. Yeah. So he's, did the you thing hear is, like, he's... she's incredible in Ozarks, but it's all, you know, it's not about like if you're great actress, bad actress. Like, you've got to know your audience and kind of figure out things a little bit, like how to put things together ozarks was hard to get into for me man i loved it man it, i thought it was great i didn't watch it 
Yeah, oh, it's it was really, really, really good. I, tr- I tried to watch is the whole first an... season. It was just so slow. Is it Netflix, right? That's a Netflix series, yeah. isn't it? And I think there are three or four seasons. It's not a lot, but she's really good in it. Like, she's actually, she is a key, key in it. She's really good. Really, really good in it. She plays the perfect hick or a redneck. I'll say that. Yeah. Well, hopefully she'll play a good role in this. Hopefully it isn't some, sh- maybe, maybe I always think in my head, you know, we're going to, maybe we'll get something good, even though we all are expecting dog shit, but we'll see. I guess the only thing is I would say about the fantastic four is like, it, you don't need to push like the female piece. Cause you've got Sue storm. And then you also have Alicia. And if you really want to bring it in with the uh, Ben and Alicia's kids, the Cree and the skull that was in the Kirk comics, if you, you know, if you want to bring in the kids because you have a boy and a girl. Oh, I I am looking forward to the Deadpool three movie, but if if it's bad, I I pre ordered the bottle of gin that Brian Reynolds whiskey company or whatever is selling, so I can always drink it if it's bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he wins either way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. So it's like, oh, I can forget about this movie if it existed. Do you think we're going to get Colossus in Deadpool 3? I think it's going to be a bunch of cameos from a bunch of characters throughout the different Fox timeline. Yeah. I don't think maybe like a character here or there, but not like a, a lot of them to stick around throughout the entire entire plot of the movie. I got to show you guys um, this post by Jim Ballant. He posted one of his Batman covers um for or catwoman covers for catwoman 32 back in the day and it is one of the most beautiful covers that i would not have thought of if i didn't see the original art check this out wow there's a lot going on there right i love the black and white out centered i mean the ink you can really tell it all the skeletons there's just a hundred skeletons just around batman and catwoman and it says welcome gotham city of the dead here's the here's look at this i would love to own this i would be so stoked to actually own this this shit's crazy who the fuck is that in, is that discourse? Yeah. <laughs> is that our first time caller? Uh, Trying to add into the conversation? Yeah. What's up, caller? How are you? <laughs> I'm going to jump in the call and live, you guys. Um, all right. Uh, okay. I forgot they were on. They, were, they didn't realize they were on mute for a second. Okay. Um, let me go back. All right, here we go. Look at They'll that. jump in if they have questions. Yeah. That is amazing. All the skeletons. He drew them all. He even hid a, a cat skeleton in it. Look. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. That looks like a little dinosaur. Here's the original cover. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I like that. Like, you, you don't see this on the cover art, but... Man, I f- that what a great fucking cover! It is. That's it. Yep. Do you what, remember this guy? That one. I saw that, but I, I just like an hour or so ago. Yeah, there's a guy out there that collects c- Cubs cards. He goes by One Million Cubs, and he was getting ready to get his one millionth card, and they tops brought him out to the Cubs game and surprised him he got to throw out the first pitch i think and they oh, gave him nice. they gave him the thousandth card and it's a card of him oh that's cool right yeah, yeah. Or the one million like card, right? my name is bo thompson i'm collecting one million cubs baseball cards basically if they're in a cubs uniform it's a cubs card so to be out on the mound in front of forty thousand people surreal it, it's hard to put into words Please welcome diehard Cubs fan, Bo Thompson. For 
Yeah, this is like yeah, fifty cents. Yeah, Surreal. On <laughs> behalf right of Tops, it's our honor to present Bo with his official one million cups card. I'm just, I'm so. Dude, it's a super fractor too. That's fucking yeah. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That is cool, man. That's that makes me wonder cool. where I got lost. Like, how the hell I haven't told the Mets I've burned like ten million of their cards <laughs> to get on the field. Wow, that's very cool. I mean, it, can you imagine being a fan of a team and doing stuff like that, and then getting out on the field and then giving you stuff like that? I, it's just, Did, I, yeah. How do we get a imagine. top now? How do we get a top now card? Like, how famous do we have to get? Not like, that famous. Not that famous, like no. Is is our podcast good enough to get the top snap? I think McClay's closer than we think. I mean, he's no. the one hanging out with Rob Liefeld. Oh you yeah, need, I mean, striker, Liefeld striker. Does. You need a Jabs family type of uh, views to get to get those things. Oh, it's oh, it's so when Tops approaches us to be in the um, in the card set, right? Is yeah. that is that when we made it? Yeah. Hey, if if. If I ever was a volcano, this is what my volcano would look like. <laughs> Mike is it smoking all the time. <laughs> it's blowing out smoke rings, dude. Yeah, yeah it's popping out little smoke <laughs> rings. <laughs> Look at that, dude. How crazy is that? <laughs> Where is that? It's, um... Or what? Where was it, I guess? Mount Etna Volcano in Sicily. This isn't the other day. Bo pu puffing out little smoke rings. <laughs> Look they're at perfect, that. Look, I, dude, they're fucking perfect. Look at this one. It's getting ready to come out. <laughs> that's a high end volcano right there. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. That's really I thought cool. you were going to show me the other type of volcano. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go take a look at some FOC, some FOC stuff. Shout out to uh, Lefteros and Cover Price. Shout out to Cover Price. Always doing great things, cover prices. Make sure you guys go sign up to cover price. Get their uh, premium stuff, and they give you get a bunch of extra cool extra stuff. All right, here we go. Captain America number nine. You get uh, first appearance of skins. Um, it's a new mutant. So Cap is putting a team together, so it may be wise to keep an eye on this title. Why is Cap putting a team of mutants together? It's kind of weird. This is JMS writing Cap, I guess. It is. Not I guess. It is. And Jesus Saya is doing that cover that you see right there, which is kind of weird because this... I can't tell if the, if the shield is see-through or what. It's kind of weird. It's got an odd so, shape. Yeah. So, yeah, second print's going to be him shirtless. <laughs> Next, we have Giant Size X-Men number one. Huh? F Giant Size 50th anniversary of Giant Size X-Men, I guess. Is that what this is? Another selection, another new mutant. This time, uh, an, a new mutant called Maze by Anne Nocenti. There you go. Okay. And then Strange Academy Blood Hunt number one. First cover appearance of the Dark Hold after being transformed into a human child. That's kind of cool. That's a cool idea. I'll rock with that. Strange Academy is such a great series. Yeah. Um, and this is part of the Blood Hunt uh, extravaganza that they're doing. So this, this sounds super interesting. Uh, speaking of Strange Academy... Um, we're going to have a really uh, awesome show. And one of the things that we're going to talk about is a specific Strange Academy cover that I love so much. So be ready for that in the future. All right, moving on. Superman House of Brainiac special number one. This is the first cover appearance of Brainiac Queen. 
I like that too. I think that's cool. I think Brainiac's such an underutilized character, a cool character. This is Joshua Williamson, who is doing the amazing stuff over on the Energon universe. So I'll check this out too. Maybe this is a jumping on point. Because he was doing great stuff with the Flash back when he was with DC. I mean, like, Brainiac was always one of my favorites with superpowers. Just seemed like he never got enough time. Yeah. Yep. Back in the day. Lobo, too. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Void Rivals. <laughs> Number one, the eighth print. Holy oh, that's going to say eighth print? Wow. That's unbelievable. If you get ninth, these on it. Dude, I had no idea wow. it had a seven, six, or a fifth printing. <laughs> I didn't either. And it tells you if you don't know it, if you like, right. how many stores are ordinary. Like, if you can find a couple of his late prints, it's probably probably worth picking up. I mean, honestly, I didn't know it went past third printing, but like, here we are at eight. I mean, like, as much as we love the Energon universe, it, yeah. Well. Is it counting like convention exclusives and stuff like that? As I well? don't know, but I would I, be interested to see how many shops are selling out of the sixth and seventh prints of these. They could be. I just don't know how many actually order them. I, yeah. I think that's a bigger question. You know, I'm, I'm finding that we live in a, a world that is totally different than the comic shop world. Like it's, there is a difference, a big difference between those of us that used to spend Collect. every Wednesday in the, comic shop or go at least once a week to the people that don't do that anymore you know they do all their collecting on ebay and that type of shit anyways next we have web of spider-man number one the second print a gorgeous ryan brown green goblin cover holy cow looks badass right yeah. yeah okay so i just need to order 25 of these and then sell this the 125. Yep. And then I'm good. <laughs> yep. We'll go look at that in a little bit here. Wolverine number 49, full debut of the adamantium armor. Why does he need adamantium arbor, armor? I, I thought say, he has I don't, that. I don't already. get it. I don't like the art. I don't I don't get the concept. Yeah. Linnell Francis U and I love Linnell Francis U, but I don't like this one. This is the new stupid. Iron Man, right? Uh how do uh, he uh Lefteros writes Wolverine number 49. How do I know this is the debut of the adamantium arm, armor forged by Forge to end the Sabretooth War? Because it's on every cover and the solicitation says so. Wow. So this was the only way he was going to beat Sabretooth? Mm, going to have to check that out. Yeah, you need to... I am about to say, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, X-Men 97, number one, the second print. You got the animation cover featuring the whole team, so that'll be a cool uh, nostalgia book to pick up. Good stuff. Make sure you guys go follow Lefteros on IG. He does a great job uh, putting, making these lists for FOC and New Comic Book Day, and he also writes a good little uh, uh, extra stuff on the website so go check them out on the cover price website and also uh, go follow black crown comics on uh, youtube he does a show every wednesday night and they go over more of uh the extra stuff that left Terrell's puts out so good shit all right let's go look at some of the other stuff we're gonna go look at our boy billy at economics and comics And this right here is a absolute banger. Spider Gwen, the Ghost Spider, number one, Jenny Frizzle. Uh, yep. Wow. Yeah, that is a great cover. And there's a one in one hundred as well. Where's a virgin? I don't know. It's it sound it's small, but I just like how even like Spider Gwen, and it has the the different colors between that and Ghost Spider just stands out a little bit. I mean, little stuff. That, that's a great, great cover. What does the rest of the covers look like? Ooh, uh, that's a good... Dude, Spider-Gwen is, is like Gwenpool. They're, the, the design, the color palettes just make for great covers. Great cover art. Oh, with that, with that aqua pink... And then the black and the white. Yeah, yeah. It all plays on. Yeah. 
I personally like the storyline, too. Damn, that's a good cover. Mm-hmm. That's a good cover, too. The Lobos? Holy shit. Oh, that does look badass. One in 50. You don't I, like that? Not as much as the other one. I, I think yeah. it's uh, it's JV versus Varsity on that one. Yeah. This is the foil variant. My Sosa. Cool. Yeah, yeah I okay. bet on the foil looks really good. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like the design of how it goes, runs all the length down the arm, the pink web webs. That's cool. Man, that's a good that, cover. It looks better with the trade dress, I'll be honest. He, I about to say, so is the 1 100 the verge? Yeah. Yeah. This I one think looks the better. Background's, is the background a different color? On the 1 100. Ooh, look at that. What is that? That's a good looking cover. That's cool. Um, that's Zerdy. That's I don't great. like Zerdy's faces. His faces are weird. The color is the, ba- the same, it looks like. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I'm not a fan of wow. Zerdy's uh, face art anymore. There's something off about what he's doing over there. Uh, Space Ghost. We talked about this the other week. Um, I think they have like 80,000 uh, solic- They've sold 80,000 solicitations, right? Is that right? Wow. They're doing really well on this, but you get the Barons. Yeah. The cover is really good. This Edge of Spider Verse character, Spooky Spooky Man, I think they're calling him, is a very interesting character. This is Todd Knock. It looks fucking creepy, dude. Oh, Todd Knock doing an ASM 300 homage. Never seen <laughs> it before. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one, Venom number 33. There's an homage. Blood I mean, I, I always love that Web of Spider-Man cover. It, yeah, it's, just, it's so cool. Like, isn't it issue like thirty-two or thirty-three as well? I think it's earlier in the run, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Actually, let's see. Well, look at all of the. Uh, I always love number two as well, with like him swinging down with the like the the vultures on the side. Let me see. That's the regular cover. There's a. This is it's the, thirty-two. This is it is the mm-hmm. B cover? Ooh, look at that! How the oh man, that's creepy. How the jaw goes all the way back like that. His tongue looks like a sickle, like a Russian sickle. And the sinew on the breaking of this that all that was always like so creepy to me when like you have that sinew like just oh, it's gross. The background makes it look like, makes me think of like a Renaissance. That's better dr- drawing. This is the like one that. in twenty five sway. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. So there you go, one in twenty five sway on that one. Um, oh, look at this. This is a great. Mark Brooks does good Deadpool covers, and this is a great Mark Brooks Deadpool cover. Oh, yeah. Oh. I like this uh, headshot variant. Yeah. That's awesome. Right? <laughs> it really is. Let's take a look here. Um, here we go. Deadpool number two. Get the Taskmaster. You got the design variant, which is really good for... This is a 1 in 10 for a character called Death Grip. I think that's pretty dope. Interesting looking character. Almost looks like a predator right here. Did, did, sorry to interrupt, Brian. Did, did anyone... I have not had a chance to read Deadpool 1. Like I, I saw it, but I haven't had a chance to pick it up. Is it good? I, or is it? I, I have it. I haven't read it yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need to read it so I don't fall behind. I will I tell you, was... just uh, I I picked up Avengers Twilight number one the other day. I yeah. just finally got one. Good, right? Oh my shit! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I found two, three, and four, and so I grabbed them immediately. I was like, it was such a great story. Yeah, this is what number one was. Yeah, this nice. is a one in twenty-five Declan Shelby. It's pretty good, not bad. That's a. <laughs> That's funny. They did a homage to that. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Is it a store variant that did that? Yeah. This is the Liefeld. Raw yeah. observations. Yeah. 
All right, moving that on. That is a great cover. Right yeah, there. The, it yeah. is. It's good. Yeah. You've got the New Mutants. They're doing a, a 3D printing of this somewhere, I saw. We already talked about these. Star Wars High Republic number seven. You got a Noto. I'm not a fan. Um, there's the Wolverine number 49 adamantian armor design. Are you kidding me? Look at that. That looks terrible. It looks like Silver Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say he had joined the Silver Hawks. I heard he's dropping a rap album next week. So This is the Pinogian. Uh, green goblin black suit variants that they're doing it's good but that that black why do we got to see the black suit variants i feel like that's a dead i know it's the 40th anniversary of the spider-man in the black suit but yeah i like yeah. the green it in the like background shit they just, it's too much yeah another giant size x-men variant homage variant for you get the transformers a six printing this is Pretty cool. That's a pretty cool cover. Oh dang! So do you think that's gonna go up to like a eighth printing as well then? Of course. You got the. This is my favorite uh, of the variants. The David Cho Space Ghost. This is the one that Nick Brucci talked about uh, when we brought it up that he really liked. So I think it's a cool book. Amazing Spider-Man number forty-nine. I always love this cover. This is such a great original cover but this is a i'm not a fan of all the disney homages but this one i like man i don't know why i like this one what's up thorough next we've got uh white trees superman house of brainiac special this is the foil Jamal Campbell. We already looked at that. Space Ghost, FOC Toth model sheet. That's cool. Alex Toth, uh, creator. Did Alex Toth create Space Ghost? I think he, I know he did all the original stuff, but I don't know if he created them. This is gorgeous right here. X Men Forever number three in Hook Lee black costume Phoenix variant. That actually looks pretty dope. Why, that is awesome. There should be a storyline about this. I don't like, care I, about the the costume. I just think it's a cool look uh, with the the phoenix behind her like that. No, it complements it, right? Yeah, like like the black suit and then like the fire coming from the background. Oh yeah, her red hair, yeah. yellow eyes. That's a great cover, man. But okay. is it also because we've seen every other color? Yeah, like phoenix. Probably. Yeah. That's a good uh, Vader cover, Darth Star Wars Darth Vader number forty six, Tom Riley. That's cool. Oh, we got Shadow Band. How we get Shadow Band? We got Shadow Band. Are you Shadow Band right now? Why is is the show not coming up? I know a lot of people said that they couldn't find us. Oh uh, really? Yeah. Um, uh, Avengers fourteen, the Pachalo variant. Man, this is a good cover right here. For this is a Blood Hunt tie-in. Look at that. That's a good cover. Or is it because I showed the Astros hat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, let me let me hit my garbage can and we can get back on track. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amazing Spider-Man number forty-nine. Is that JRJR? Yep. Tell from a mile away. This is the best Space Ghost cover to me. The Matina foil. Look at that. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, or is Remo just asking for a link to jump on the stream? Is that is that what's happening? <laughs> he's in. The, he's in the group. He should be able to see oh. it. Check check your uh, email, Remo. There should be a uh, thing from uh, me about a Google Hangout group. Um, or just hit us up on the side. Yeah, this is badass, man. That's dope. That's a good one. Uh, Dave Dorman, Savage Sword of Conan. That's interesting. You got the Strange Academy Blood Hunt issue that we talked about, but there's... Oh, what is this? Stormbreaker. Lucas Wernick. Amazing spider -Man. Ooh, look at that. Holy cow. 
That's beautiful. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, those those Stormbreaker variants, they'll, they'll catch you by surprise. Yeah. And then not a lot of people order them either. I, I've seen some shops asking quite a bit for some copies that they had left over or I bought from a collection. I don't, I'm not sure which one. Damn, that is good. It's a great design cover. King Spawn number 33. That's an interesting cover. Look at that. Damn, that's good. Paul Reno. Puppeteer Lee is doing cover art on one of the covers. That is gorgeous, man. Wow. There's the Puppeteer Lee. Oh, man. Oh, That's nice. That's beautiful. Holy shit. Both covers are great. I haven't seen a cover for them for in, in a while. Man. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Second printing cover. That is dope. Yeah. Number three. Uh, cosplay cover, Co Savage Sword of Conan. That's a good cover right there. That's a good cover too. The uh, Jay Lee cover. Oh, that does look cool. All right, that would pop as a foil too. Looking, cool I'm actually poster. looking. For, I'm looking forward to the Space Ghost cut stuff to see what it's like. Man, look at this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan, number three variant. That is awesome. I love how big Rocksteady is. Look at He's fucking huge. Uh, this is an interesting one, too. The Santa Luco cover. That's a good one. Oh, man. All right, everybody. Cover of the week for FOC. This is might be up there for cover of the year. If this Netflix thing wasn't on here, this might be cover of the year's category. Masters of the Universe Revolution, number one, the Dave Wilkins cover. Oh, my God, man. Hordak, Skeletor in the background. We need to go add that. All right. We're going to do that right now. Where are the covers? That Nelson questions. Industry. Show. There we go. Right here. I'm gonna add that. Oh, you have been keeping tabs for covers of the fucking That's good. yeah, I have, bro. <laughs> We're gonna prepare for the end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Instead um, of like trying to scramble and like, like a month before December comes, like everyone's like full of turkey and trying to figure out what what, what books came out in January and February. I know there was a good book. Oh, that came out three years ago. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing, man. What a good cover. Okay. Now we go here. There we go. Not bad. Sweet added to the list that is beautiful man holy shit that is good masters of the universe all right next strange academy blood hunt the blood red variant that's actually kind of cool star wars darth vader number 46 this is an interesting cover and lanel francis you darth vader cover that's not bad i like that giant size uh, X Men Dave Barden Deadly Foes variant that we talked about that that's pretty cool. Uh, this Fantastic Four number twenty right here. Oh, this might be cover of the year category too. Are you kidding me? I tell you, what, so I actually read this series and I'm probably about five behind. The Alex Ross covers are great, but the um, I know I miss. I think it's Ivan North does the writing and or North does writing and Coelho. I could, I could be butching that. C O. Actually, I've got one over here. Hold on. Who does the art? Coelho. C O E L L O. I, I'm not familiar with him, but like a couple episodes or a couple of books ago, 
they had Doctor Doom, the dinosaur, and like the, the arts. It's cool. It's almost reminds me of like an older book where um, you can pick up, you can read one book, and yeah. you can pick up another one, and uh-huh. they're almost like little mysteries. It's almost like Scooby Doo, but I think they're all trying to link together and like build up something bigger. But it's it's cool. It's I, I like at Fantastic this. Four right now. Tell me this Dracula cover doesn't look like Nick Cage. I was gonna say I, I was like, did they take that off like a movie from like the nineties or something like that? <clears throat> Looks like Nick Cage. Deadpool. Oh, look at this, Captain Marvel number eight. This is another one of those black cover, uh, black costume variants. Captain Marvel number eight by Sergio Davila. That's that's striking. It's noteworthy. Um. Captain America, uh, we saw that one, the Lionel Francis U one. Yeah. yeah, it's rough. Yeah. This one, though, whole oh, another Stormbreaker cover. Are you kidding me? Federico Vincenti. Look at that. Look at that skull cover. Oh, God, that's good, too. A Ghost Rider, Captain America. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy mashup. Whisper Queen, that's an interesting variant or cover. What is this about? Whisper Queen. Uh, Chip Zdarsky, Chris Anka, all-star team behind the white trees returned to a fantastical land of black sand. Oh, this is part of... uh... That's interesting. Look at that. Jesus, that's a crazy cover. So, buddy of mine is telling me uh, when Comic Palooza comes to Houston, I guess it's probably in a month and a half, he gets to interview Zdarsky. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty excited about it. Cobra Commander number one third printing that's a cool cover I'll pick that one up Uh, more cosplay stuff Uh, Guma Lilo and Stitch you got a Forstner Trish cover right there shout out to Trish I've always wanted to watch that I've never seen it Lilo and Stitch that's a Mm-hmm. A much beloved uh, Disney animation. I have movie. not seen much Disney, so I'm kind of hoping my son, like, I can watch a lot of them with, with him when yeah. he gets into it. Yeah, hell yeah. That's yeah. cool. Uh, more Star Wars. That's a Strange Academy Blood Hunt. Rod Reese, Fantastic Four covers garbage. This is a good cover. Look at this. Blackula. Uh, Blackula. Dracula Blood Hunt <laughs> number one. Mateus Man. Mana. Man, hi, and me. I'm, I'm fucking that up. We're just gonna call you Mateus, brother. Uh, that is a good cover. Holy shit! Interesting. That's yeah. This is a good cover. Ken Lashley. I always love Ken Lashley art. Yeah, Lashley's always got good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool black costume variants not that good. This is a, a good cover. Captain Marvel number eight. Who is that? I, see, I, I don't know, but I like I like that cover just because I don't know who that is. And I think that's a that's a cool good looking, looking character. character. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody know? I'm not reading Captain Marvel. Yeah, I don't think too many people are. That's a problem. This is the end hook. Oh wow, look at this. Holy cow. That's cool. Yeah. It's Greg Land. I wonder where he stole it from. So, you know, I keep seeing the whole, all this stuff about Blood Hunt, and I just, I. I'm going to check it out. I don't think it's going to be any good, yeah. but I'm going to check it out. This is a good in Huck Lee vision cover. Uh, even. It's, it's okay. I can't even tell you what the colors are. I think it looks great, whatever yeah. the colors are. I th- it may just be black and white. It basically looked black and white to me. It looks awesome. Nakayama. I love the candy mints. I think that's interesting. Um, Nightwing. What else you got here? More Space Ghost uh, stuff. Dark Souls. Uh, Negaduck. I know Trish does some stuff for that, too. And Tony, right? Yeah, here's a, here's a yeah. Trish cover for Negaduck. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Look at that. That's good. 
So was neg so this is where I think the age difference me being way older than most people is Negaduck like a like like Darkwing Duck is like he's the bad guy for Darkwing Duck. I think Duck? so. I think so. I don't remember him in the con- in the cartoon. I wasn't I wasn't around when Darkwing Duck was uh, a big thing. My brother was was a big fan of it, and I'm only four years older than my brother, so I remember watching it. I don't remember seeing him in it, though. It makes sense. I just, uh, I don't know. Ghost, what's Ghost Lord 10? Oh, that's a Murakami? Murakami? Like the cover. That's a beautiful cover. Wow. It's cool. Reiko Murakami. Wow. Colin Bunn. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Uh, My Bloody Valentine. What a great movie! Look at this. Back in the day. That's a crazy cover. Great band too. Yeah, I was going to ask: Is it a reference to the oh, band or to the, oh, I to the movie. movie? I didn't know there was a band. Yeah, yeah there's a band name influence from the movie. Yep. Valiant. 2024 number one. What is that? Huh. Is that what's left of the Valiant universe? I guess. Faith. Look at that. Faith returns. I wonder if uh, Mel knows. Uh, more Godzilla versus the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That's all right. Noto Quiet Cancel. X Men Forever number three. Usagi Ujimbo Crow number two. Doctor Strange. Another uh, Captain America. Uh, yeah, lots of goodies. You guys see anything that uh, AWA upshot? Little Black Book. Uh, Cemetery Kids Don't Die. That's cool. That's a cool series. Flash, I'm way off on that. I thought that was going to be excellent because I'm a big fan of Diodato, but it was not good. And that is it. That is. Well, uh, I don't think it's been very good since Williamson left. Yeah. It seems like it's, and that's been a while now. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got some cool shit to show you guys. Let me go find it. All right. Uh, is that a Stanley Cup? So Brian, I, when I saw your thing about on uh, Wednesday about when you started talking about the hockey fights, I actually thought I was at that twelve fight with the the, the Devils because I I'm pretty sure like I was at a Senators game or at the rain at MSG against the Senators, and I remember them dropping gloves immediately, and it was back in 2012. So I was like going through tickets, and so like, I'm still trying to go through tickets. Oh wow! And I, I, I mean, I've got like there's just bunches of bunches of tickets in here of like wow. different stuff. So that's awesome. Um, I mean, I keep everything. So I, I'm, but I'm like, I think I was at that that fight. So <laughs> that would nice. be a good ticket to get. And I remember because that... they dropped gloves immediately, and yep. the friend I was with, was like, what's happening? I'm like. Oh, it spilled over from the prior. Um, yeah, prior game. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They hated each other back then, man. Back when Henrik Lundqvist was the goalie for the Rangers and Martin Brodeur was the goalie for the Devils. Yeah. And uh, yeah. who's the American that got traded from New Jersey to Minnesota? That was so good. Um, got traded in Minnesota. Yeah, he he was he was the captain at the time, I think, and. They hated the Rangers so much, um, and I hated the Devils so much. And I remember that year. I think we went to the champion. We went to the championship game, and we lost to the Devils. And then the Devils went and lost to. I think it might have been the first Kings Cup. I can't remember. Oh, what, yeah, when the yeah, it was sure. because the same year the Kings were playing the the coyotes and the championship game. And I remember that's the game where I became the biggest 
hater of Dustin Brown because he put on he had this horrible hit on Redeem Verbata that took us out of the game and out of the series and it was so bad that at, at the end of the series when they go to shake hands which they do in the playoffs Shane Doan wouldn't even shake uh, uh, Dustin Brown's hand. Can't shake hands. I mean, it, it's bad. Yeah, and it's really bad. Yeah, and he even told him he's like, "Not tonight, Dustin. Not tonight." And Dustin's like, "Come <laughs> on, man. Come on." Shane's like, "Nope, nope." I know everyone wants to talk about Connor Bedard, but I'm like, when is Rimpy's Young Gun coming out? That's uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, extended it's gonna have series. To be the update, right? Extended series, and Cooley's gonna be yeah. in an extended series too. I think. So I'm gonna hopefully, but we were. T- I was talking with that with Richie the other day. The extended series came out and it's super expensive too because of that. So <sighs> they're gonna throw Bedard. Well, oh well, shit, I, yeah. They that makes sent sense. me um, Upper Deck sent me replacements for my uh, series one case. Series one. And yeah. basically, what they did is they just gave me a whole set of all the young guns in series one. Which there's only a couple good in there. Luke Hughes and a, go- a goalie or two. Everybody else is dog shit. And I, I just it, I realized like that that really fucking pissed me off because I wanted to go after the Bedard. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, I'm still guys- sitting on like literally in the room across from me. I've got two boxes, uh, hobby boxes of series two. I've got. Three blast, um, you know, the mega boxes for series two. I've got three or four tens of series two. I found them at Eat or Walmart with the um, the tens and the mega boxes. And I bought the hobbies when they came out at the store. There were six opened out of a so 12 boxes in the case, six were open, no one got the Bedard. So I was like, well, I got two of the six that are left so the odds are for series two there's a better chance of hitting one but still have not not had a chance to open them yet Damn. oh so you don't know if you got it Mm-mm. waiting on tyler that's awesome man makes some good shit all, i all. uh i know there's a million <laughs> there's a million dollar bounty out for his one of his the variants in that the gold did you explosion. see the the autograph card the upper deck employees got and they're putting on ebay no uh-uh so it just happened so uh, apparently that upper deck was giving like a different card to employees it uh-huh. was i don't know if it's autographed but it was uh i think it was autographed i think it was you know a, a different upper deck card thanking upper deck employees which is i think it's very nice but the problem is that the employees are putting on ebay and i think the prices have just gone nuts on them Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> because there are only a handful of them. Yeah, look, it's like the Galaxy's Edge uh, comic book for Star Wars. Like, we don't know who's got it. We don't know how many there are, but all of a sudden, there. It could be a hundred. It could be a thousand. <laughs> it could be cases and cases. <laughs> Five thousand. It's it's in gold. Go. Wow! Look at that. That's gorgeous. Holy shit! And it looks good too, boy. Look at that. It's in gold. That is beautiful. What do you think a PSA 10 will like fetch on this? Shit. Oh, boy. I mean, you're talking about like if the short print from Series 1 is going for, and things have calmed down, but if you're talking about like, I think it's going 7 8, Young Gun, I mean, like this, a PSA of this with the gold. 10 grand. Let's see. Here. He had a good, he had a really PSA good year. PSA 10s are, se- base PSA 10s are selling for 1300 Holy shit. That is crazy. How much are base PSA 10s Connor McDavid's? I want to say 3500 Okay, so thirteen hundred. I'd probably buy a couple of Capri sauce if I or twenty four. Look at that twenty four hundred dollars for one on March twenty second, and a a McDavid you can get for twenty five hundred. Oh, give me Connor all day long. Which one, McDavid or Bedard? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say first name, <laughs> McDavid. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, I mean, shit, give me Leon Drysell. I mean, yeah, give me me Dan yeah. all day long because when he wins, holy shit, man, that card, that card will double if he ever wins Stanley Cup. Maybe Where's the Tim Hortons card? Look at that. Uh, the Tim Hortons shit. That's, yeah, it's tough. You gotta hit up a Canadian friend for one of those, right? Yeah, get your donuts and your coffee. They did a rookie portrait with him. What the hell? So here's the funny part. Yeah, I think I mentioned. I think I told you, but I may be wrong. Brian's uh, that the store I go to, they had one case, twelve boxes. I've got two. They sold two or three. People opened them. Didn't get the Bedard. They said someone who came in said they started whatnot, opened three boxes. I was like, who's that? They're like, we don't have a name. Opened three boxes, didn't get a Bedard, and but they did get the portraits Bedard and just gave all the cards to literally like the kids in the store, like just put them out like with all the other. There's the cards. series one. Short print and a PSA nine for four. It's 64. come down a long way, which is yeah. great. In the off season, it's a great card to get. Yep. Yeah, I'll pick one of these up uh, when I get a chance. I- I'm just, God, man, it pisses me off. I I still don't own a McDavid Young Guns. I don't either. I won't. Dude, I sent I sent my um my um. God dang it. Who's the kid for Colorado? Nathan McCar? McKinnon. I sent, McKinnon? I, I sent my McKinnon PSA uh, authentic rookie in to, to PSA. I wonder what those are selling for in a 10. I would here. give you a bag of shit on his first yard. I fucking hate the <laughs> fucking Avalanche. You hate, you hate the Avalanche? Huh? I'm not an Avalanche fan, but, but uh, Nathan McKinnon's a badass. I love the Red Wings. I just, I can't, like, even the Macar I bought, like, I, I, the SP Authentic, I was like, I had to sell it because I, I can't have it. I just can't have it. 1500 1600 Yeah. The only thing I wish for them is that there is a true avalanche and they all get buried in it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate them. I just want Darren McCarty to get cloned by the Emperor and him just come and just <laughs> make everybody a fucking turtle. They are just the biggest bunch of fucking... Doc locals. Joe. And the, the worst part is you can't actually do like the Western Conference now with the Red Wings and the Avalanche to go to the Stanley Cup Finals. So now they'd actually meet in the Finals. finals which would be yeah, amazing. Oh, God. Yeah. It's my dream just to fucking drill the shit out of this. Doc Joe got some mega boxes and this is what he pulled. I, so it was funny. I was chatting with him anyways. I was I just messaged him. I was like I was like, Hey, you, have you opened any cards recently? And he shows me that picture. I was like I was like, Holy shit. I was like, How many did you open? He was like three. Like three <laughs> mega boxes. I was like wow. I was like, those that's good odds, dude. <laughs> hey Doc Joe, if you have any uh Brandon Miller or Hornets cards, you don't I'm I'm trying to get some. And I just uh I reached out to Vinny about that. How about, how, how about a Mark Williams RPA? <laughs> Can't hide money. <laughs> Are you interested? Do you, you see this? Alex? I was bitching about this the other. I was bitching about this the other day, where I was like, "How are they? Why do they have a first and second print coming out the same day?" And uh, Mr. Longshort put up his first and second prints that he bought. The fronts are the exact same. The only difference. Is a sticker on the back. Stupid. All right. Wow. That, wait, wait. Uh, th- there's going to be some. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't even know I what can, to say. I can, I can only see this ending badly. Like if, if you don't post pictures of the if back. Cover. That was the first or that was the front. Oh, yeah. Easy to distinguish. Stupid, oh boy. man. Yeah, that's just terrible. Um, a couple of Punch 12 sold this uh, at Heritage this week. Nate. One sold for a 5.5, five, sold for like 60 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did, did you ever get your crime of suspense? 
So, you know, I, I really, uh, I, it was a tough part on this one. I, I passed on it because, and I, I think the reason the cut mark is on there is because it's almost like if you go to Walmart and you buy the bags, if you want to put leaves in, that you have to take, you have to take your knife and cut it. Just like in the day, like they would have gotten a bunch of books. They would have had like straw and they would have to cut it. Yeah. I think this book was probably like four or five down. And there was that, it was a, it wasn't prominent, but you could definitely tell there was like a line there. And I was like trying to figure out what that line was. And I talked to the guy and he was very open about it. <clears throat> and he was like, I think that's where they would cut the, the newspapers. And this is the line. Or, and it just happened. Can, the yeah, comic. It, if it they get it yeah. And I think this one happened to be like fourth or fifth down and just barely got cut. And it was cut long enough. But I mean, the book looked great. But it just had this line in it. I was like, and I just don't know exactly how CGC would, would grade for that. Even though the book looked really nice. Yeah. And if you didn't really mess with it, you get, but you could see the line, but it would go pages down. So what looked like, what could be like a six, they could, I don't know if it would make it a two or two and a half. It just got really hard. Like we were talking about like money. And I was just like, I get it. I was like, I just don't. To where it's hard chance. to put. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's hard to put a grade to it raw. Yeah. 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 I, I told him, I was like, if you, if you want to send it to CDC, I can give you this much and then kind of figure out what comes back. And at that point there were kind of like longer periods a little bit. And he was like, well, I just, I just really just want to get money out of it. And I'm like, I think we're just probably at crossroads a little bit. Well, do you guys, it was uh, a got, great, look, great looking book. Do you got any okay. pickups uh, for when we get to pickups? Do either of you guys got pickups? I have a few things. I mean, Nate, I, have I don't have anything tonight. Have- well, actually, I have one. I have one thing I can show. I showed I showed you already, but but before we get into pickups, you guys, uh, we're gonna we have one uh, drama alert story for you guys. So let's get into it. What is up, Into the news. All right, this is a interesting drama alert story, you guys. Um, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to how uh, old creators were treated in comic books back in the day. And if you ever have done the research and or you've ever seen Neil Adams talk about Jerry Siegel and Joel Schuster and how they did each other one you know one did the other wrong and then the the dc did them both terrible this is crazy a letter in which jerry siegel tried to replace joel schuster as the artist on superman before superman came out as a comic was sold on at heritage <laughs> for 264,000 okay so Superman first appeared in 1939, created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, published in Action Comics number one, later to be known as DC, or by National Comics, later to be known as DC Comics. In doing so, they created the superhero genre, but it was a long road to publication and was hawked round studio after studio, publisher after publisher for years. This is in 1934. It's Jerry Siegel sending a... Um, a letter to Russell Keaton. And he basically says uh, it's a pitch to Russell for Superman. Um, and he tells him the Superman story. And it's for them setting up how it would look in a newspaper strip. So they were, so um, basically, uh, Siegel is trying to get keaton to do the art for a super for a strip in this in the newspaper instead of the comic and it just sold for two hundred sixty four thousand dollars. 
they didn't in the in the letter it's very interesting um because he explains the all the the story about superman and this and that well it never happened and basically they ended up uh siegel gave it another go with schuster and keaton was out of the story but isn't that crazy like it just goes to show you that Man, there was some crazy backstabbers even back then, man. It'll, it, it's human nature to, when money is involved, to some people will just throw their friends right under the bus, throw their their co coworkers right under the bus, and that's kind of what this is about. But what a historic piece of ephemera! Like this is unbelievable. Two hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars. Oh wow. That's nuts. It's creepy too. Yeah. Signed Jerome Siegel. Says here, um you will find enclosed the first week's script for the cartoon strip Superman. While the idea is a trifle fantastic, a man with infinite strength. I think it will follow the lines you like. We begin with Superman as a child, follow his history all the way up until maturity when the real story begins of his adventures in helping those who need who need helping those in need. Since Clark Kent possesses incredible strength, there are great possibilities for humor and adventure in his experiences as a child and youth. The story of his youth will run in great length before we detail his ventures as an adult. Early, he will find that his great strength, instead of making friends for him, cause people to fear him. Mothers will not permit their children to associate with him, and he will be hated in school sports because he never loses. We can weave a very human story about him. Here is the script for a possible Sunday strip that will acquaint you with the secret of Clark Kent's origin. And he gives the whole script. It's crazy to read. You guys can go read it. This is on Bleeding Cool, and you can go see it out Heritage. And then he says, let me know if you would care to work with me upon this strip. I will be glad to receive suggestions. The idea, incidentally, is liked by the general manager of Bell Syndicate, awaiting your reply. Sincerely, Jerome Siegel. Didn't mention anything about his partner that helped create most of it. <laughs> so outside the uh, the partner stuff, like, would you rather have like uh, take away the CGC grades and all that kind of stuff? Would you ra rather have like this kind of piece, or would you actually have like the first comic? First, uh, comic. obviously the first comic, but the. Because it one just sold for six million dollars. Yeah, which makes <laughs> it, that's why. Yeah, I, mean, I know. But, it makes but to be honest, I can only afford a little like, yeah, you know, little piece of of the action comics. <laughs> <laughs> but this it's is... like to me, it's like, do you want Abe Lincoln's getting in office, or do you want part of the Emancipation Proclamation? Yeah, like exactly. what he actually wrote before yes. he actually got into office. Yeah, I'm like, I would rather have that because that's that's yeah. the heart and soul of it that's a true spirit this it's is really just, a top hat you know one of them I mean, they're both hat. great so, i mean it's just it's just like, i want to wow, know like who found this did they find like was this from his family that sold it or did this get found in an estate sale like where did this come from you know this is nuts it's one of the weirdest I hope things the guys who actually what's the company that verifies the cards i hope uh, the ones that did the uh the GI Joes, or not the GI Joes, but the Pokemons, and found the GI Joes. I hope they're the same. Oh yeah, yeah. Same. Baseball card yeah. exchange, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baseball card. <laughs> yeah, this is nuts. But I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Like, can you imagine? Like, it's it feels like that's the part that you have in the display case, and you have like page after page after page, as opposed to like, yeah, you know, one kind. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I. I to me, well, check that, this that out. This is the crazy the original, part. It's the comic. In this pitch, Clark Kent is brought to an orphanage, but on the first page uses a phrase about him leaping tall buildings and running faster than a train. The script shows a f uh, the couple who found him adopting him, Molly and Sam Kent, wow. as he is too strong for the orphanage to look after him. He also speaks a fluent language of the future, even at such a young age. 
Wow, man. This is just... I, I mean... I, t- I, yeah. 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 Justin we should Shannon. all have such problems, I guess. Like we could... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you get these and Brian, you get the comic and we'll, we'll have them all. And then we'll form the Voltron whenever we meet up in like <laughs> San Diego or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is uh, interesting. So, uh, I'll that get the first is of Brainiac. Yeah, yeah. That is a uh, drama alert for the night. So, uh, David Lee Roth, here we go. Can you hear me out there? Hey, man, don't be squirting water at me. I'm gonna fuck your girlfriend, pal. Gotta love it, man. Figure out a reason to play it every week. Yeah. So, good shit. All right. Uh, what do we got coming up? We're going to call it a night uh, early tonight. Uh, this week has been absolutely uh, long and crazy for me. But, um, we, you know, we're going to continue bringing you guys great content. If you guys haven't seen the Hot 10 yet, go check it out. It was a great show last night. Really, really good show. And, uh, of course, uh, check out um, the industry special if you haven't seen that. Did you guys, how, how was Long Story Short? Did you guys do Long Story Short on Thursday? Yes, we, we went on on Thursday. Uh, and then when I realized, like, your show was going on at the same time, I was like, I was like oh, man, we're not going to have anyone watching the show. Like, I was like, everyone's going to be <laughs> watching Brian's show. I was like, oh, well, we'll still go on. And we had Swaggle House, too, as our guest on. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, so we ended up with like 80, 86 people. So I was like, oh, we're, good. We're, we're getting about the same amount of people that we yeah. normally get. So I was like, I'm like, all right, I'm not worried about it then. Like, you know. Nice. So it, it was a good show. Yeah. Good shit. Well, I uh, I am just, I am absolutely uh, tired uh, and ready to pass out. So um, I probably won't spend too much time in the Discord. But if you guys want to come hang in the Discord uh, after the show, um you know, come hang out. It might uh, turn into a long conversation. Um, that being said, come hang out with us Tuesday night uh, for another industry show. And then, of course, the Wednesday night show after that. We're going to hopefully have uh, a really interesting talk about original art with some original art whales on Wednesday night. We'll see how that plays out. But other than that, uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to all the new subscribers that uh, we've had on the channel over the last couple months. It's been absolutely amazing. And thanks for all uh, the likes and constructive criticism. And we appreciate you guys. We're out. Peace.